Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming, and welcome back to Elden Ring, and welcome to patch 1.09 and a build video. Today we're taking a look at the curved greatswords and how they've been vastly improved by, well, a simple change to their speed, range, and recovery time of various attacks. It's making a major difference on how quickly and how far you can actually reach with your attacks, and whether you're using it in one hand, power stance, two hand, it's significantly better, especially when we combine that with some incredible ashes of war, like the Bloodhound Fang's Bloodhound Finesse, that uppercut strike that deals so much damage suddenly that has better range now, or the newly improved Cursed Blood Slash of the Morgoth Sword. The projectile that comes from the Slash, its generation speed and the recovery time was improved, meaning it combos much better than it once did, but also the follow-up strike actually comes out nigh on immediately, much more consistently landing in PvP. So this build is a combination of the improved weapon type and the impact that it has on these two fantastic weapons. So the build in PvP then. This is just really nice. It's a simple and effective build. We have great base damage with our weapons, but then when we're power stancing them and hitting with both, you're dealing like nearly a thousand damage per trade, which is terrifying to deal with, especially if we're talking about like say a jump attack. With the improved attack speed and range of these things, they're kind of a nightmare to deal with when it comes to trading and general spacing. Give me similar threat level as if I'm using say like colossal weapons or something. And every hit of course is building up more bleed. We won't get massive bleed procs, but an extra 400 damage just for existing and then an AR boost is never a bad thing and with a better recovery on these weapons we have roll catching and avoiding damage after a swing that's a lot easier to deal with but most importantly i find that it always lets me combo say one attack into another a lot more consistently this can allow me to say intentionally miss a strike and bait someone to run back into trade when they think i've missed and i actually have a follow-up attack coming in fact the recovery is so good that i was able to intentionally miss and then jump and double hit someone to finish them off in a duel overall though i think the best move sets are going to be the power sense running attacks because they hit with both and have that incredible range jump attacks if possible though they are hard to actually aim in pvp they will hit like a truck even with the nerfs to specifically that in pvp so baseline the move set's great the speed and range which is coming out is great the recovery really makes a difference but then we have the ashes to enhance it all well first up morgoth's ash that's been improved this patch to get the cursed blood part out faster right so that allows it to actually land the fire or pop part more consistently in trades so the cursed blood the fire the bleed part of that is actually hitting people more often you'll hit with say the weapon part and then the pop will also hit them while they're staggered which feels amazing although the pop still goes off after the strike so if you do miss with the strike the pop will protect you in a manner of speaking forcing them to roll that as well as the original strike on the other hand with the bloodhound's finesse with the fang God damn, the improved range on these weapons has affected that ash it feels in PvP because I am catching people suddenly with that sort of uppercut strike. That's how I find myself using it, pulling out suddenly, you know, two-handing my offhand weapon and smashing them for half their health in one hit. Admittedly, the follow-up strike where you dash forward with iframes and do the attack after that, it's very predictable, it's unlikely you're going to hit that, but just using the upper head strike and jump back... That works really well. The build has a variety of arcane and faith stats to work with, so you could choose different incantations to work into a build like this. I just tried Swarm of Flies as an easy, impactful pick, pressuring them at range and forcing them to pick the poison. And as always, if you have good trade options, that's always nice. So overall, this is a very simple and uncomplicated build for PvP. You've got the incredible threat with the basics of the weapons, thanks to their new range and speed and general great damage. The reliable ashes to choose between that both hit extremely hard, while also building up threats of things like bleed and a bit of fire damage as well and whatever utility options you'd like to put in with your faith and arcane stats we can work in overall curved great swords are feeling great here and i've seen a bunch of them today in my testing meanwhile for pve things are simple too take your jump attacks you can entirely rely on just these doing power stance double slams and absolutely beating opponents down with the standing combo being faster that's more reliable and hits consistently and to open a fight it feels great to sort of just run at the target do a power stance double attack combo that into a jumping attack and then go for an ash whichever one you want bloodhounds is great for staggering opponents whereas you can spam the morgoths to build up lots of fire and bleed build up either way it's going to work great for trading and deal really reliable damage compared to some of the other builds that i've been looking at recently especially when it comes to pve this build in its simplicity allows for a pretty fluid playstyle. you know i'm not just doing an ash of war over and over as my only source of damage i'm able to smoothly mix things up based on what attack or combo or ash is going to work in that situation whichever you do it's going to hit hard and it's all coming out quicker in this patch with the improvements players who were happy to run morgoths or you know bloodhounds fang which was an incredibly popular and good pick before they're just going to find that whether you're using these in one hand two hand power stance i mean they were already good but now they're just 
really good. Honestly, I'm surprised by this change. It feels great though. With that then, let's now explain the build, which is, as I've said, pretty straightforward. We have the Morgoth's Curse Sword and the Bloodhound's Fang as our two main weapons, of course, and the seal that we've been using for our incantations is the Dragon Communion Seal because we do have a bit of arcane in the build. You do need 17 arcane to even use Morgoth's Sword, so we have a nice amount there. With the little bit of bleed, we may as well be using White Mask and the Lord of Blood's Exultation, although in this current batch of 1.09, they are both nerfed, so they give us less attack power than they used to however it's still good so still worth wearing since this is a double sort of power stance build having a little bit of enhancement to jump attacks where relevant is great you saw me using them both pvp and pve so why not make them stronger by wearing this chest piece then for the gloves and the legs it's basically whatever i can get away with in terms of weight and maximum poise and for my talismans i've got the shadow of alexander because we are doing lots of ash of war damage and we have the great jazz arsenal and Erdtree's favor to help with equip load because we are power stancing some reasonably heavy weapons. To be able to wear relevant armor and actually have any poise, you're gonna need to have a very high equip load and to level your endurance that much, it's just too much to really commit to. So these two together, health and equip load, it really helps. For the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we just have the Flame of Shrouding Cracked Tear because it slightly enhances our fire damage of the Ash of War Morgoths. But other than that, it's whatever you'd like. As always, we're using the Self Buffers, Flame Grant Strength and Golden Vow. And for utility because we have arcane anyway as i've mentioned swarm of flies is a nice option for pvp lastly we have our stats so i would call these the more pvp focused stats 60 vigor is required for pvp to not really be like one shot but you can easily go down to 50 or lower in pve builds and gain some stats from that from there you could put some points into mine to have some more fp which would be nice maybe run heavier armor with more endurance but you're going to need 18 strength to even use these weapons and pretty high dexterity you want as close to 80 as you can get with a pvp build i can only reach 75 because we need 25 faith for our incantations and 17 arcane to actually use one of the weapons but yeah drop some vigor for a pve build and put it into whatever you feel is missing but there you have it, that is my look into patch 1.09 curved greatswords and these two particularly good ones at that. Morgoth's is feeling particularly good. I'm shocked at how impactful that slight speed up of the generation of the actual cursed blood explosion has felt in PvP. Whereas Bloodhound's Fang, I just, it was already crazy. It was one of the best dex weapons you could really go for, certainly in the early game. And now it's just straight up better. I'm loving these subtle changes they're making to different weapon types and I'm going to keep looking into the different weapon types and see how they've improved too. For now though, that's this build in this video though. Thank you for watching and until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. See you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.